before we wrap up, I want to do fun shit about Vanessa. <laughs> What's next on the bucket list? So a new project that I'm not allowed to announce okay. yet, but hopefully depending on when this comes out, I will be allowed to announce. Ooh, okay. I can't wait for that. Anything- it, is pu- it is puberty related. Okay, I will just good. tell you That's that. good. Anything that you have learned that's now on your fuck it list after quarantine? Um, besides high heels. <laughs> I know mine have been napping forever. Mine are like, have an inch of dust on them. No, um, no. Maybe social obligations that just like aren't meaningful to me. I think me maybe those can go by the wayside. Me too. What about a secret pleasure? Regency romance novels. So before there was Bridgerton about Mm. six years ago, I shopped around an idea to adapt another writer, not Julia Quinn, but another writer to um, make TV uh, series or movies about these books. And the reason I love these books, which also is you won't see in the movie adaptation of Bridgerton, but it's actually in these Regency romance novels is the sex is feminist Mm -hmm. and it is equal. You've never seen more men going down on women than in Regency (laughs) romance novels. (laughs) And I loved how feminist the sex was and how empowering the storylines were. Um, And I wanted to get those made, but sadly um, I'm not Shonda Rhimes and um, therefore she beat me to it. Have you seen Bridgerton? Yes, I saw, I've seen a few episodes of it. I haven't quite finished it yet. So I will say, I know we're getting off rapid fire, but I will say seeing that the, the scene where she loses her virginity Mm -hmm. is a great way to teach our kids how not the way it is when you lose your virginity, like the chances of you orgasming the first time you have sex are zero are like. Yeah. I would say like at 0.0001%. And meanwhile, she's like having the best sex of her life ever. So I did walk my daughter through why that depiction of losing your virginity is not accurate. So it's worth at some so point watching that episode. Your 13 daughter now has commentary from her mother about what to expect and not expect from the first sexual experience. Well, I said to her, I was like, okay, as one of my friends said, like, it's immediately like P in the V, like no woman is going to organize them from like an, just immediate P in the V. So I didn't say that to my daughter, but I did say to her, Hey, sweetheart, what does he need to find if she's really going to orgasm? And she's like her clitoris, of course. Oh my God. And you're like, okay, that's my best parenting and professional. I'm like, mic drop. Oh, I'm yes. out of here. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, Sorry, off topic, but no, yes, I love it. It's so good. My... <laughs> it's so good. What about your favorite beauty treatment? Um, a pedicure with callus remover where they mm. do that stuff yeah. and then they do that stuff. And you don't and then realize I'm... how the fuck you got so much stuff off your and foot. And I'm like, that came off my foot. I'm disgusting. There's like a pile of like dead gray skin by the like pedicure oh, thing. I know. Yeah, I said so to I... my son, I'm like, don't you want to get a pedicure? You play beach volleyball. Like your feet are disgusting on the bottom. Yeah. It's so I, gross. Um, I'm getting my first pedicure in a week and I'm so, so excited. Oh, I like cannot I, wait. I can't say it. that's going to be my first because my if I don't, I get ingrown big toenails. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, sh- it's shocking down there. It's, I'll just say it's that. It's not a good situation. Okay. So what woo woo things do you do? Um, deep breathing a lot, a lot, Meditation, a lot of crystals, deep breathing. Plant medicine, no, nothing. no. Okay. Nothing. I'm like super, I grew, I grew up in a family where my mom was pissed and it was usually in the car. She'd do this. She'd be like, and then we knew we needed to shut the fuck up because she was like really mad. Um, and I like, that's, I'm not particularly, um, I'm not particularly experimental in terms of like trying that stuff, but maybe that's like a new thing. Maybe I am going to become more experimental. Well, I've, I've been trying to do the unplug meditation app every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay. And I just interviewed Susie, who's the founder of it. And I'm like, okay, the phone is next to my bed on the floor. The app is there. 
if I click on meditation of the day, like right when you open it, like it, it's 10 minutes right here, right now. Right, so I've, I'm right. good for a week. I've done it every day for a week. Good for you. I'm like, I got to do this 10 minutes before I get out of this bed or I'm never going to touch it for the rest of the All day. All right. I'm going to try it because Mary Pat, my colleague meditates every single day. And, okay. um, she says it's just like incredibly helpful and meaningful. Say, I mean, it could be placebo, but this week I'm like, I don't feel as like mentally deranged as I usually do. <laughs> like I'm not becoming as unhinged as I normally do. So I, I don't, I don't think it's placebo and listen, whatever works, I know whatever works, whatever works, just but the, keep doing I think it. Having the app and just right when you open it, it says meditation of the day. I mean, obviously you can pick through 500 million different topics, right? but the fact that it just like feeds it to you. And you're like, I'm just going to do this 10 minutes. For some reason, it's just made it easier. Favorite TV show or what you're watching now? Um, so I'm, I just added a subscription to Acorn TV, mm. which my husband says is like essentially high volume, low quality content. Okay. okay. Um, he says it's British for mediocre. So it's just like a series of like really mediocre um, Commonwealth shows. I've been watching bomb girls oh, about young women, um, in Canada during world war II who are working in a munitions factory. Anything um, like that? I would say it's like a B minus. Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm like always looking for TV shows cause I'm not a big TV watcher. So they have to come with like a good recommendation. Um, we watched call my agent, which we were really into. Okay. Um, I and then yet. it, and then it ended, which was sad. Um, I'm rewatching watch Gilmore Stiesel? Girls. Stiesel? So I've watched Stissel. I've watched like a season and a half of okay. that. I did watch the Israeli version of Beauty and the Baker. I think maybe, what was the name of it? Beauty and the Baker. No, but did it have a different, it didn't have a different name? In Hebrew? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Okay. Um, that was fun. I mean, I've watched so much stuff and I can't even like Tiger King feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> like I was just like, I was like 28 when I watched Tiger King. It's like so, so long ago. So much has happened in this past year. What was the last thing you ordered from Amazon? A tick collar for my dog. Okay. That's super sexy. Was um, intuition natural to you or did you work at it? Natural. You natural listen. it's like my it's like my superpower and what happens when you don't listen to it are you just so pissed off um i'm so mad at myself when i don't listen to it so i get accused by my family of being my extended family of being judgmental because i take my intuition very seriously um and i have learned to continue to listen to it. What I have, what I have gotten better at doing is coupling intuition with empathy. Mm. Right. So like, Hey, there's like, this is making me really uncomfortable. I don't like what's going on here, but then I take it the next step, which is like, huh, I wonder what's going on for that person that they're acting this way and that's making so me feel interesting this way. That you say that because that's what I've been doing with my middle school daughter is, mm -hmm. Hey, I know that person's comment made you feel really shitty, but like, let's think about like what could potentially be going on for them. Yeah. They would have to make a comment like that. Yeah. Because typically it's not really about you, it's about them. And that's such right. a hard thing for kids and adults to. Yeah. Accept. And it's funny, I actually don't know developmentally at what age kids can begin to understand that concept. Yeah. I mean, I think certainly in middle school, but like, I used to try that with younger kids and everyone was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Like, don't, don't, don't do but that I anymore. I actually think it weirdly works because you can train a kid like with a script until they really know it. So like right. I always said to my kids, if somebody falls, your first instinct shouldn't be to laugh. Your first right. in instinct should be, are you okay? So I remember right. with right. my son, like his teacher fell onto like a rose bush and the teacher wrote me an email saying, oh my God, it was so sweet. Your your son came over and said, are you okay? Do you need a Band-Aid? Oh, and sweet. the point is, is it may have been memorized, 
Right. But at least but it doesn't matter. It didn't matter because it the, right. it was still there. And at some right. point it's not going to be memorized. It's going right. to become second nature. So I That's hope exactly that right. middle school semantics become second nature. Yeah, for sure. Um, what's the smallest thing we can do today to start our shift towards self-recreation? So I think, I mean, apropos of our conversation, letting go of the small mistakes as yeah. quickly as we can. Oh. Um, and sometimes that involves circling back and apologizing and then letting go, but like not carrying those things with us all day, every day. And also like not carrying with us other people's mistakes because that also takes up time and energy. So I just know. like letting go of that stuff as quickly as we can and, and moving past it. What would your bottom line advice be on finding the sweet spot in the second half of life? Don't self edit, try things first. Mm. And then if it's not for you or it's not working, then edit it out, but don't edit out before you even tried it. I think so many of us are so scared to try something and then say, oh, we're not doing that anymore. Like, right. Like the shame. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I started this company. There have been times when I thought I was going to have to like change the company, close the company, I mean, the pandemic, right? Yeah, like business yeah, yeah, yeah. is um, totally upended. And the, what I kept thinking about was the shame of having to tell people that it didn't work out. I know. Right. Like, and I'm like, who the fuck cares? No who cares? No like, this does. is my life. Who cares? But that fear of admitting that I had failed um, was so terrifying that I'd love to be able to just like be willing to try things yeah. and without the worry that they're not going to be perfect or they're not going to work out. And I also think that sometimes it's not failure. It's just sort of like, oh, I started this podcast and I realized like it's just too demanding and I'm not getting enough time to do X, Y, or Z and I'm only right. living once. So now I just decided to not do it anymore. Is that a failure or is that a pivot? To something right. else. It's kind of like the framing of it. Someone needs a new ter word for the term pivot because I've used it so I many know. times. I, I think it's like dead on the side of the road. Like it's like exhausted I know. from being used so much. I totally agree with you. And I sort of started calling it on Instagram, the midlife remix. Oh, because, I love that. Yeah, I saw that. I love that. Yeah, because it's a remix. It's like you're itchy for something new. You don't know what the fuck right. you're itchy for. You don't know if it's like you need a new car or you need some Botox or you need to go <laughs> get a master's in Jewish education, but you know you're itchy for something. Right, right. So it's a midlife remix. That's how. Oh my God, it, that's so that's funny. How, that's how I'm viewing it, at least for this year. Now that we have shoveled our shit for today, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you have loved Vanessa's golden nuggets as much as I have. I love digging deep with our golden shit shovels today on this podcast. If listeners want to find you, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at Vanessa Kroll Bennett, and they can subscribe to my uncertain parenting newsletter, which we can put the, the link yes, to that'll subscribe. Be in the show notes. And they can find my workshops and talks at www.dynamogirl.com. So good. And our you guys next have to check it out. Our next workshop for girls on puberty for girls is before camp and it's May 22nd. So, so is it a one day thing? How long? It's is an it? hour and a half. It's virtual. Um, if anyone has issue affording it, please reach out to me because cost is never a barrier to participation. Um, and we cap it at 20 girls so that everybody can fit on one zoom screen. Got it. And so are you, you're leading it? I lead it with my colleague, Mary Pat. Okay. Um, and we go through our female you have to see anatomy. Vanessa's holding a female um, uterus, fallopian uterus, model. reproductive organs, Everything. and then I have my my stuffed female uterus, a heatable oh, hu huggable uterus God. for cramps. That's like when Sherry Ross was holding a 16-inch dildo, and she's like, oh. "Look, your husband's like this," and then I was like, 
my husband's no, just he's normal. And then my husband listened. No to one's the, husband is like that. Oh my no god! One's husband is like- <laughs> he listened to the episode. He was like, "Okay, thanks." And I'm like, well, "Thanks, babe. Did you want me to claim you were 16? And, like what? And like that was a setup for total disaster. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is less pressure. Yes. Um, and yeah, so we go through anatomy, physiology. We go through stuff about friendship and consent talking about hard feelings. Um, and it's really wonderful. We have girls from all over the country. We always have an amazing cohort from LA. I'm sure you do who bring a wonderful emotional intelligence and self-expression. Yeah. They're always our best participants. I adore them. Um, um, but do you, do you find that because you're mixing sort of anonymous, like people, kids who aren't necessarily friends in real life that you get more, participation and openness because they don't feel like they're being judged by the kids they go to school with? Like, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, so sometimes it's nice for the kids to be there with kids, other kids they know and with friends and it's comforting. Um, but we make it really clear what the culture of the workshop is and that no one is excluded and that there are no dumb questions and that like, we just want to hear what they think and what they feel. And so it's really about creating like the ground rules and creating a safe space for them. And then it's kind of, they start to connect with each other in really lovely ways. When we have girls in person who know each other and who are friends, it's just about being clear that like, Hey, we're not going to talk about other people at school. We're not going to use people's names. We're not going to use examples of like, when your friend who's in this room did something to upset you, we're going to like, keep it um, keep it anonymous. So yeah, it can be, it can be hard, but they're, I mean, the kids are amazing. They're so interested and curious and engaged and just hungry for information. Um, and they're just like super smart and perceptive. I love it. It's like the best thing I ever get to do. I mean, I'm like, maybe I should take it. Like, I- well, we do a parent's workshop. <laughs> We're not doing one right now, but we do do a parent's workshop, yeah. um, which is a lot of fun. A lot. I- the fun. funny thing I was going to tell you before is so the other night I was listening to a podcast. It may have been yours with Elisa. I don't know. I was listening to one and it was in my ear with the earbud, but my daughter was who was on top of me, like I told you, was literally right. shoulder to shoulder with me. And somebody says, and then we talk about nocturnal emissions. And my daughter <laughs> looks at me and she goes, I need the last two minutes of my life back. <laughs> like, oh my God. And then this morning she goes, are you, are you doing the puberty talk today? And I said, yeah. And she goes, am I going to need an hour back of my life? I don't don't know. It's it's possible. So I think it's kind of funny that like, even though my kids give me a hard time, they also feel like on their side, they can kind of give me shit too and give it back to me. And it sounds like your kids give it back to you also. Yeah. I mean, it's all about a conversation. A conversation is never, the other side of the conversation is never going to be exactly what we want or how we want it. And it's really about being in dialogue. Um, And sometimes it's not even about being in dialogue. Sometimes they don't want to answer or respond or engage or anything. Um, I mean, my question for your daughter would be, okay, so do you know what nocturnal emissions (laughs) are? (laughs) Right? She Um, must have, but I'm going to ask her now when I pick her up. When I pick her up, not answering a phone call today to do my do over from yesterday. Right. To do your do over. And I would also ask her, Hey, I wonder how boys feel when they have nocturnal emissions, because often girls feel like boys have it really easy in puberty. And the truth is it's just as hard for boys just in different ways. And so building an empathy for her male friends and for boys about what they're going through, as well as empathy from males about what females are going through, I think is like a huge step forward um, for kids. Yeah. So two things, no phone call when you pick her up yeah. and circle back and say, you know what, when we were talking about nocturnal admissions the other night, I'm wondering, do you actually, 
Do you know what those are? I'm curious. I'm, I'm actually going to ask her and then I'm going to do it you and text you. Email me. Know. Let oh me know. God. Oh my God. And then you're going to meditate. You're going to do the unplug meditation app. Okay. It's I'm 10 committing minutes. to trying it. It's I'm literally committing it's to 10 trying minutes it. of your life. You just turn on your phone and it's there. So I want everyone to think about shit we can start doing today. One small step. I want to thank Vanessa for highlighting the tools and strategies for having puberty and other awkward, hard chats in our teens and tweens and how we can help our kids in the re-entry post-pandemic in middle school and high school. Thank you, Vanessa Curl Bennett. I Thank love you. this. This is going to end up being like three episodes because this is Great. so long. It's going to be so Whatever good. you want. I love Whatever it. Whatever you want. It's so good. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're my new best friend. I'm going to call you and tell you about <laughs> nocturnal emissions and whatever happens this, this afternoon in my do-over. I'm, I can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kisses. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Bye.